In this episode, I take a trip to Karamea region of South Island, New Zealand. It's a pretty unique area because the river here actually runs red or kind of a rusty reddish brown. And that's from tannins that are leaked from the trees in the area and it stains the water. This area is quite far off the beaten path in a remote corner of South Island, New Zealand. In fact, most New Zealanders have never even seen this place. I think it's quite underrated as you're about to see. I managed to get quite a lot of pictures in this area and I'll show you quite a lot of them in this video, but I'll save the best one to last, so make sure you watch to the end to see that one. I uh, deliberately timed this hike for when it would be cloudy and potentially even wet and according to the forecast that's what it should be and now that I get here of course it's blue sky just direct sunlight <laughs> so that didn't work out too well but I'll just scout it out while I'm here and I expect that it probably should cloud over a little bit as the day wears on I was actually kind of doubtful whether I could get here and not get soaked this place is about three hours drive from the nearest major civilization so it's kind of a gamble figuring out when to come here so now I'm here I'll scout it then I'll wait for the weather to change I guess well here you can see that the river is all kind of a reddish brown but not dirty because uh, you can actually see the bottom of it down here it's kind of interesting nice contrast against the green if we can find a good background to go with it, might have something interesting. Well, it's taking quite a bit of uh, crawling around in here to try and find a good composition. Of course, there's the obvious one from the platform up top, which is obviously where all the tourists take their pictures from, so I'm not going to take a picture of them there. I want to have something a little bit unique. And I've been crawling around for about an hour amongst all those rocks under there. The problem is, the most impressive part about the scene, I think, is that bridge that's going across the top, which is way up in the sky. And the only way to get it without just looking straight up is to come way back here. I don't like getting the sky in the shot, but uh, you can't really help it here. This is a super wide angle. I'm on about 16 millimeters. I wanted something of interest in the foreground, so I've got this uh, waterfall here. And my shutter speed's around about uh, half a second to try and get the ac action in the water. Meanwhile, I'm getting bitten by sandflies. This is my first experience with sandflies in New Zealand, at least on this trip. I also like this, this tree that's over here with all the moss on it. So I couldn't quite get that in the composition, although I 
Like I wanted the, the cave on the top left third and the waterfall on the bottom left or bottom right third. And then I've tried moving it over so I get the tree in the shot as well. And it's on the, now, it's on the right edge and the cave is on the left edge. I also did uh, the pano shot to get the whole scene. This path has these uh, quite a few of these interesting little side streams that, uh, if you venture up them, you can find some interesting shots. This particular stream right here, I've done a shoot at before about five years ago. That was before those uh, branches were over there. There's a lot of debris here now, so it's not really working anymore. Well, I've just ventured a little bit off the path and found this scene here in front of me. You can see the, the bridge behind me where I came from, not too far off the path. But uh, obviously a pretty nice little waterfall here and lots of green moss uh, contrasting against the reddish brown of the, the stream. I was complaining about the sunlight before, but it actually worked in my favor a little bit because there's little spider webs crossing the stream here. I don't know if you can see them. When the sun goes away, you can't really see them. But when the sun's here, they kind of glisten. And I was kind of hoping to get that, and I don't know if I got it or not. Of course, I had to go with a pretty short shutter speed for the spider webs because they're moving a little bit. But I also got uh, a longer shutter speed for the, the bubbles that are going down the stream. walking out from that archway and uh, there's one more to go to. They're on opposite sides of the road. Each one's about a kilometer walk, pretty easy. And the weather I was expecting is starting to arrive. It's just starting to spit. Lighting conditions for this next one might be pretty good. The other arch on the other side of the road is maybe even more photogenic. And I think and I can tell you can get a, a decent shot from inside the arch. just done the obligatory pano shot in here. Not sure how well it'll turn out. It's super wide, more than 180 degrees. And I, I, it took about 10 shots to get it. So I took it from, as you can see where, it, where the camera is, but I also did one down here amongst those rocks because I wanted to have a interesting foreground. And I'm not really sure how well that'll turn out because they were quite close to the lens. A uh, very wide angle, and I don't have a proper panel head. So, if it turns out any good, I'll show you what it looks like right here.
I've come up into this side cave here and it's really dark so I don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing here but uh, I've climbed my tripod into an awkward position onto the side of the wall of the cave and what I'm trying to do, maybe you can come over on this side I'm trying to get far enough to the right side of the cave that the rock formation down by the river is not cut off intersecting with the side of this wall here get a bit of an idea of my composition there and I'm trying to get this little I'm trying to get this hole here to line up with that log that's down there so that we can see the log now I can't get my eye to the eyepiece very easy in this position so I've just gone by a hunch that this might look all right I'm thinking this archway is a little bit more photogenic than the previous one, as you can see right here. And my composition, not quite sure what I'm trying to do here, but I am aiming a little off center. So I'm actually showing off these rocks and moss on the wall here, maybe as much as the arch. The arch is just uh, coming into the bottom or the left third of the picture, as you can see there. And I think that I'm not quite liking this part down here. I probably end up cropping off the bottom, probably even the top as well. And there's a lot of compositions just right here. And if you just turn around, pretty nice scene just right there. I can see there's a, a bridge going across over there. So there's obviously the track goes there. Not quite sure how to get there yet. But uh, look at these logs. They're virtually jet black and moss on them, so I think that's actually maybe a shot right there too. Well, I was eyeing this spot earlier on. I was standing over there taking shots and looking at this area. I think it would be awesome because of these logs here in front of the cave. And from this angle, it kind of looks like just a log jam. However, there's interesting angles in all directions here. If I turn around, now looking this other direction, uh, it's a nice little stream coming out here. And the log there, they have a beach right there. Yeah, so this is not bad, but I'm not really sold on my composition at this point. So I'm gonna work it a little bit.
Well, I did shoot quite a lot of pictures at Karamia and I've got six of them pulled up here and I think three of these pictures don't really work and one kind of works and two of them do work quite well. I wonder if you would pick the same three as I would. Let's just have a quick look at them one by one, uh, starting with the ones that I think don't work. I think it's worth looking at how this image actually started before the edit. And here you can see that uh, there's really quite a lot of clutter in this. And for me, the main problem here is that your eye does not really travel through the picture. It's uh, kind of a brick wall. To eliminate this problem, I did a, a very heavy vignette to try to draw the eye right through the, the picture. But for me, it still doesn't really work. I think this is maybe a two out of 10 on this picture. This is the before edit. And this is the after edit. I'm certainly not the first photographer to take this shot. This is a panel shot that's actually more than 180 degrees. And of course that really distorts the picture, makes it look not really how it was. I think it's really kind of a party trick shot that uh, goes maybe a little too far. And there's this large highlight in the water reflecting the sky that I just wish wasn't there. So these things considered, I think I would give this picture about a three out of 10. This is the before edit and the after edit. I think this shot has a lot of interesting elements that should make a good shot, but I don't think that I found the angle that uh, really made the picture work. In fact, when I was there, I even said I wasn't sold on my composition and looking at it now, I'm still not sold on it. But I think if I went back and tried a few different angles, I might have found something a little bit better than this. This shot for me is about a four out of 10. Now this is the before edit and the after. Now here's another panel shot that's probably close to 180 degrees. And this one works a little bit better than the other shot, I think. Uh, although it still makes the river look like it takes a U-turn, where in fact it doesn't. The main challenge with this picture is it is really quite full of clutter. What's supposed to be the main attraction at this place is the archway that goes across the top. And with so much clutter in the picture, you almost don't notice it. What does work really well, I think, is the river. It looks like tea flowing over the rocks here. You can almost see the water moving. This is the before edit. And this is the after edit. As you can see, quite a big difference. And yes, I did replace the sky on this one. I would say this is about a five out of 10 picture for me. Although there are parts of this picture that are quite great, especially when you look down on the river in this corner. That leaves us with these two pictures that I think are definitely the best ones of the batch. I originally passed over this image and didn't even edit it. And that's because when you look at the original, well, it's not very impressive. But uh, after editing, it actually turns out quite nice. I had two versions of this image, one without the sun coming in and this one that does have the sun coming in. I originally thought that the sun coming in was a bit distracting, especially on this one boulder. However, the composition didn't quite work as well in the shaded picture where the stream enters and exits the image didn't quite work as well as it does in the sunlit image. It just seems a little more tidy having the stream bubbles exiting the picture in the corner. And the sunlight in the riverbed actually adds a little bit of extra drama and really brings out the red in the stream. Here's the before image and after the edit. I would say this is more like a seven out of 10 for me. And now the shot that I think is the best one of the batch. There's only one small area of conflict right here. Not that big of a concern though. As you can probably tell, I did crop off a fair amount on the top and bottom of the image. It was just a bunch of useless clutter. And here I'm narrowing it down to what actually is important in the picture. As you can see on the left side here, it was raining when I took this shot. As a result, you can see in the distance that there's quite a bit of haze. And that's what gives this picture some atmosphere and makes the picture work quite well. Sometimes the temptation is to try to dehaze areas like that, but in this case, I think that would have destroyed the picture. Here's the before edit and the after edit. So this is probably the best shot out of this batch, and I'm gonna say this is about a eight out of 10 for me. I think you'll agree that the Karamea region of New Zealand is quite underrated, 
In fact, looking at this video as I was editing it, I was seeing a lot of compositions that I wish I had done while I was there. So I'll definitely want to go back there someday and try some more. Mm -hmm.